Randy, yeah, bringing us down to earth, perhaps uh, more down to earth than most people think about every day. I, I, I realize the United States and the world has a lot of smart people like us in this room, and you know we, we have a lot of solutions in mind. But I, I worry more about the impact that peak oil and peak gas could have on the economy and the financial, uh, you know, structures of the world, and therefore on the the poor and middle class that really don't have the resources to, to cope when there is a crisis. Do you have any thoughts about what we can do sooner rather than later to protect people that don't have resources, who will be, on the whole, probably the most severely affected? I, I think some of the afternoon speakers are going to address this question. I, I, from a biological perspective, you end up fighting over this and the poor people get screwed. Um, and, and I think that's the default path, I, I, I would argue, from a biological perspective. But I do think, I, I mean, that's the importance of, could you have a depletion protocol? Could you, could you do something really smart here? It's, it's intriguing to me. You can't solve climate. Uh, oil, you can try to dominate. You, you cannot dominate the atmosphere in the way that you might hope to dominate uh, uh, oil. And, you know, subdue the natives is one of our bad instincts as people. And, uh, but, but climate forces you to go in another direction. Uh, and and that, that maybe climate policy is an analog for how you deal with oil. I, I don't know. I, I, there are a lot of questions that I don't have answers for. It, 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 one of the intriguing things to me is actually beginning to think, um, you know, our nation is so sprawling. But there are only about 10 states that produce more energy than they use. And, and as I've been going to South Dakota and some of these other places, I've been encouraging people to think, draw, draw a circle around the area in which you live, maybe a 500-mile radius or 300-mile radius. Take your pick and then challenge yourself to run. Run whatever is inside of that circle, not for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, but for 200, for 300, for 400. And it's easy for me to figure out the answer to that in South Dakota or Nebraska, Minnesota, Wisconsin even, gets more difficult in the more densely populated states. And I would agree with you. I have lots of politicians in my family, and I typically I just do a blanket public apology for how broken our political system is. But... Uh, it has responded in the past to great challenges, and I, I'm actually hopeful that we will again. What is your plan for us to, for localizing? What are you doing to self, become self-sustainable? Me personally. Are you? Man? Yeah, I. Um, I live four miles outside of a small city in western Colorado. I, you know, n none of what any of us are doing are enough, but I have a photovoltaic system on my house, a solar hot water system on my, two or three of them actually. Uh, I heat with wood. I've reduced my greenhouse gas footprint in that house by 75%. None of this is adequate, none of it's enough. Um, but you know, I, that's where we're starting now. That's, you, you would just you have to, would no, you no action, no hope. I mean, that's kind of my motto. Would you recommend tying into the grid? On, or no, I think you want to be a part of the grid and a part of the community. The grid is the best resource we have in the station right now. That's why we don't need hydrogen. Yeah. Uh, my, <clears throat> my takeaway from your speech was uh, speak truth to power and don't be shrill. So my question is, uh, I'm living in the aerospace industry and I work with very capable, very smart folks. However, my default mechanism now that I'm getting a bit uh, more aware of peak oil is to do a lot of charts, a lot of data, and I'm reaching uh, chart overload and, and the conversation quickly goes with very smart people to, yeah, yeah, but technology will take care of all that. So my question is, what is your experience on anybody else who can share lesson learned on how to get through to a constructive discussion uh, when data overload doesn't get you there? Yeah, I, people have a limited ability, I think, to, to grasp data and charts. I personally think these depletion charts you've been seeing are really important. I think it's, uh, you know, here's a challenge. Here's something we need. We need to animate those charts of Texas, the U.S., the lower 48, Alaska, Norway. We, some of you brilliant computer guys need to figure that out. Show me an animation of the North Sea and pair it with Maggie Thatcher. And, and talk about, quote, the r rational economic production rate 
of this precious fluid and take it around, show it to school kids in England. You know, I mean, they're going to end up barbecuing baby boomers anyway, so it's probably good that they get, you know, learn that early on. Um, last night during the film, they talked about the fact that uh, if Iraq was a major importer of carrots, we probably wouldn't have invaded it. Could you talk to how you see how do we begin to address the issue of the power of war in international politics and the economic ramifications so that more people outside of the choir can understand what a powerful driver that is and why very important decisions are made? You know, the Iraq thing has been, I mean, that I think would tie into a little bit of the insanity, but after 9-11, maybe that was appropriate. Um, you know, I'm troubled by this enormous embassy we're building in Baghdad, and, and I think we're building these permanent military bases out in the desert, and, and no one really wants to talk about that. And, and um, I don't know, we're, you know, after 9-11 we heard about, a lot about these exotic tribes in Central Asia, the Pashtuns and the Uzbeks and the Tajiks. We're the oil tribe. We're consuming our body weight in plastics and petroleum each week, 140 pounds per person per week. And, and that's, where you, that's where it takes you. Given how oil's distributed on the planet, if you're the oil tribe, you, you end up there. And you end up there time and time again. And, and I, I, I wish I, you know, I wish I knew the answer to that because I, I think, and there have there been answers, there have been answers proposed, but we've got to move quickly now is my sense and we've got to get on the right path because I do sense that it's kind of narrow.